Welcome back to Hidden Agenda, everyone. President Day Olmec here is prepared to attempt to save Chimerica again, as his last attempt, five hours ago, resulted in a video without an audio track. See? Right there. Most unfortuitous. Sure, I could have made post-commentary, but I hate doing that, and it'd take me even longer to record it and encode it than it would be to try recording episode 3 again, so fuck it! I'm gonna make new memories. It helps that I don't remember exactly what happened last time, either. Okay, so I was going to encounter someone. Let's encounter someone. We're going to talk to the Campesino. Ernesto Alarcon Mendez. Beanfields, Trinidad Province. 70% of Chimerican farmers own less than 5 hectares and grow 80% of the staple food crops of the Chimerican diet. Sounds kind of important to, you know, establish a working relationship with them. Or him and them. Small scale producer of food crops, including milk, corn, and beans, president of the Union of Campesinos of Chimerica, UCC. A weak and ineffective organization under Farsante, the UCC played little role in his overthrow, though many members gave guerrillas food and shelter. Alarcon now hopes to build the Union into a major force in Chimerican life. Perhaps we can assist him in this endeavor. We shall continue the encounter. Under the dictator, the National Bank was never interested in making loans to us campesinos. Credit came from the men who bought the crops. They took all the profits, and each year the campesinos owed them more. If this is truly to be a revolution, that policy must change. My proposal? Make loans to the scattered food producers the first priority of the National Bank. We have to feed our people, and, uh, despite our limited resources, hopefully we can make things work, you know. I made some budget promises to education and health care and... You know, hopefully we made everything work. What do you think, advisor? In deciding how to encourage the growth of our agricultural economy, we must consider our international reputation. Encouraging the export producers is the best way to represent Chimerica as a fiscally responsible member of the international community. So, Francisco here advises us to direct a national bank to give priority to the producers of export crops, while Ernesto here wants loans for everyone. I'm going to go ahead and side with Francisco here. As Senor Alarcon listens to your explanations, he looks off over the fields he knows so well. My Presidente, I have only my fields in my head, my crops, and my children, and yours are so much more. For myself, I will be patient, persuade my friends also, but we cannot wait forever. Fronte smiles with approval across the river, you must be willing to get your pants wet. It is time to start waiting, Presidente. I gotta admit that man doesn't look like he's done much waiting. Okay, I don't remember exactly what happened in, in the episode that now doesn't exist. But, uh, I developed a distrust of that man. Due to, uh, I think he has a hidden agenda and he wants to be President Day himself. I'm calling shenanigans on his bullshit. We have any new interesting fucking reports? I don't think those are new. How are we looking here? How are we looking here, rather? Okay, 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 okay. Let us meet next with... Let's have a chat ski with... Hmm, the Landless Laborer. Claudio Aguilar Herrera. Latifundia Las Victorias. Trinidad Province. Cotton-producing farm in a fertile valley provides seasonal employment for workers, many of whom also grow their own food on poor lands in nearby hills. Agricultural laborer employed seasonally, living in a small adobe shack on the outskirts of town, <laughs> rides with his six children to work each dawn in a tractor-drawn cotton wagon, large burlap bags in tow, spokesman for the land now movement of landless peasants, plus five points to yourself for plus five Grimoth bucks, money, foods, what the fuck ever, if uh, you got the uh, the adobe reference from one of my other Let's Get On the Adventures. <laughs> Presidente, all my father's life he farmed the fields you see around you. All my father's father's life he did the same, but what have I to leave my sons? Twenty years ago the dictator took my lands from me. This land belongs to Signor Tomas now, they said. He will grow cotton on it. You can work for him. Now I cannot even buy shoes for my sons. There are many like me, Presidente. We know the soil and we know how to grow corn and beans, to once again have enough good land to feed our children and to feed the nation. That is all we ask. Claudio wants us to give power and wealth to the poor through a land reform program. 
The people of the countryside grow restless. Too many poor families have barely land enough to grow corn and beans to feed themselves. Many more have no land at all. They look with envy at their neighbors and bosses, some of whom own vast estates with thousands of hectares of unused land. The voices demanding change grow louder and louder. We have no choice but to break up some of the largest estates. Francisco here wants us to announce plans to develop a land reform program, which is less drastic than promising land and wealth to the poor. I like the idea of land reform better. We, we, we only have so much money here, and we kind of promised it to education and health care. Your children will benefit from the education. Maybe. I hope. Right. A smile comes to Aguilar's weather-worn face. My Presidente, your words follow my ears like the first rains on the earth at the end of the dry season. We will pray for you. Fronte, blah, blah, blah. Any interesting news reports? We just got a letter? Ah, a glorious new epoch. Epic begins. With an announcement of its intention to promote land reform, the revolutionary government took a bold step towards a future bright with promise. Details of the new land reform program have yet to be announced. May the forces of reason and moderation yet prevail over the foolish passions that seem to have swept through the capital like a hurricane. Always a different opinion about everything. Oh, you suck! Ah, oh, you're awesome! Ah, oh, your voice is great! Ah, oh, your voice sucks! Ah, oh, you sound like Seth Rogen! Ah, oh, you sound not like Seth Rogen at all! I don't know what the fucking dude's smoking, but seriously. <laughs> Oh, all right. Um, trying to work here to see if I can improve our economy, and I think I'm going to speak with the industrialist next. Tomas Diaz Valenzuela, garment factory. Oh fuck! Labor-intensive light manufacturing characterizes ind industry in Chimerica, still a relatively small part of the economy. Tomas here is the head of ACMA, a leading association of businessmen and merchants. He is co-owner with a U.S. conglomerate of a business that imports electronic products in order to perform labor-intensive assembly processes in low-wage Chimerica. On the board of directors of the O oh Fuck Conservatorio de Musica. I, I can't just, like, fucking transition into O oh Fuck and then do, like, Spanish. Conservatorio de Musica. He is himself an accomplished amateur horn player. An accomplished amateur, huh? Cool story, bro. The, dict the dictator's ouster, Diaz says care. The dictator's ouster, Diaz says carefully, has been purchased at the cost of considerable loss of investor confidence in the stability of our nation. We must take steps to calm fears that the new government will adopt radical anti-business policies. I suggest, therefore, that labor, labor, sorry. I suggest, therefore, that labor agitators be handled firmly so that we may regain the trust of our transnational partners. Damn, hot dogs are coming back. My proposal... <laughs> Direct the police to keep union agitators from corrupting the workforce. That probably sounded a little weird out of context. <laughs> the hot dogs are coming back! Fuck! <laughs> Hide the kids! <laughs> so Tomas here is like, eh, unions blow. Come on, throw me a freaking bone here, Presidente. And Liliana Ortiz de Lanza says, After all, there is a certain justice to the demands we hear from our workers. For the sake of labor peace, I suggest we raise the minimum wage and allow unions to organize. Awkward transition, but she wants us to guarantee unions the right to organize and strike. And I am for that. Screw you, Tomas. Fuck, not fucking utilizing my police force to oppress the people. Hell no! I don't want another revolution on my hands. If you pay the musician before he plays, what kind of song are you going to get, eh? Diaz shakes his head. I suppose you would know all about that, you accomplished amateur. A bad song. A song with too much rum in it, for example, and too much pain. Hey, are you speaking from personal experience, bro? <laughs> There's some, like, personal trauma in your life. Y you know, whatever. Chimerica needs more of this way of thinking, Presidente, Ortiz says graciously. It will be a pleasure to carry this matter onward. Good. We're doing a good job. Blah, 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 blah. Next encounter.
How many more meetings do I have to go to? Okay. Um, hmm. Let's have a chat ski with... I don't want to talk to the money people. I might have to talk to the money people soon, but I don't want to talk to the money people now. Have a chat with, we'll say, the USA Ambassador, L. Quinton Bufford. Aid from the USA may involve generous funding, funding and technical assistance from various development projects, AID. Depending on the recipient country's strategic situation, it may also include training for police forces and direct allocations of currency to the Treasury, ESF. Your external affairs minister will advise you during this encounter. Newly appointed ambassador to the United States of Chimerica, graduate of Georgetown University, career foreign service officer, worked for many years as a political officer. Chimerica is his third post at ambassadorial rank after two years stints in Liberia and Laos? Laos? I already used oh fuck. <laughs> Olmec is gonna have to make another ruling on that. Someone uh, posted in the comments of the first video. <laughs> I think it was Crowley 9 I think that might be his YouTube name. See, guys? I like upload videos as I record them, and then I can interact with you all better. So, oh, my God. Now, watch. This video is not going to be uploaded for, like, nine days due to, like, some personal problems. <laughs> That's going to be awkward. Okay. Continue. <laughs> we are pleased. The ambassador says warmly, to be able to offer development assistance to your nation. This assistance will be earmarked for private enterprises only, I should point out. All associated goods and services must, of course, be of American origin. Though we start off in a limited way, the potential exists for expansion. We look forward to seeing what direction your new government chooses to take. Accept North American offers of development assistance. I think we're going to need to do that in order to get us back on our feet after the uh, the insurrection. Where we overthrew the fascist dictator. It installed a democratic form of government. For the time being, we will need to accept the aid of those sons of bitches up there. <laughs> the timely development aid offered by the United States will help us get back on our feet. After so many years of the dictator's mismanagement. Yes. That it is agreed, Buffett says with a firm handshake. Chimerica and the USA shall be partners in progress. Our unique reservoir of ex Our unique reservoir of experienced engineers, scientists, and agribusiness managers will be at your disposal. Thank you, Asshat. The overthrow of the dictator was not our most difficult task. The most difficult task lies ahead. We must build a bright future on a shadowed, underdeveloped past. It's easy to war, easy to destroy, but much more difficult is it to create something meaningful from those ashes. I think I'll have one more meeting this uh, ye old month. Let's have a chat with the cotton cultivator. We're trying to improve our economy here. It might be worthwhile to talk to him. Vicente Castillo Ayala. Latifundia Las Victorias, Trinidad Province, at the fall of Forsante, largest cotton plantation in province at 1,346 hectares. Owner of 400-acre cotton farm Los Chiles and part owner of several other farms in Trinidad Province. President of ACCA, the Chimerican Association of Cotton Cultivators. Member of one of the 19 families long dominant in Chimerican life, both second cousin and brother-in-law of of the current leader of the Rosarios. So a fairly important and powerful man, all things considered, and we'd like to keep him on our side, although, to be fair, he's kind of a big businessman. He wants to make sure that profits continue to flow, and uh, he continues to have the support of the government so that he keeps his profit margin as wide as possible. But he can definitely be of, of uh, good use. What is it? All this about a reform of the land. Have you all gone mad there in oh fuck? 
Castillo scowls at you, shaking his fist for emphasis. The right to property is a gift of God. It is our duty to guard our property against thieves and terrorists, whether they come as ignorant peasants or communist government administrators. It is not too late to amend your mistake and return the land to its rightful owners. Fucking excuse me? To prevent the rural areas from erupting into chaos, we must quickly distribute land to as many of those who have always worked it as possible. Decree that no estate may be larger than 600 hectares. Anything over that will be purchased and given over to their workers. The former owners will be compensated with bonds to be paid from, for from the future earnings of the new owners. Yes. Castillo rises slowly to his feet. You will regret this ruinous decision, I assure you. There is nothing more to say. With great dignity, leaning on his cane, he passes from the room. Yes, yes, get your pants wet. In the first year of your presidency, the dry season ends and the rainy season begins. Cool. Cool story, bro. Let's see here. Is there nothing sacred in this land of folly? The government, in its wisdom, will decide which ignorant peasants may despoil the land of other men. Can it be long before the government tells us when to plant our crops, what brand of rum to drink, what color pants to wear on Tuesdays? Oh no, it's the slippery slope argument, son of a bitch! <laughs> I'm defenseless against that. <laughs> what do, Internet? What do? Fuck, you got me! Chimerica, aura. You sons of bitches! <laughs> LOL! <laughs> Pro tip, if you haven't noticed, every time I say LOL, it's in one of those ironical things. <laughs> now I'm just being a dick. <laughs> there's one of those ironical them there situations <laughs> where I'm being all heard or. You know, ironical. You, you remember that word in your book learning? No. No. Yeah. Western diplomats await with interest the government's response to leftist provocations. <clears throat> Observers agree that if the government caves in and allows illegal land seizures, its ability to maintain security will be seriously put in question. Mm hmm. Well, they might be illegal land seizures, but, uh. Things happen. Mistakes were made. Military expenses are going up. That's. No, our military expenditures are going down, but aid from the United States is going up. Social spending, excuse me. Social spending, oh yeah. That is raising like a motherfucker. <laughs> that, well, no. Expenditures from in for infrastructure is going down. Well, that's cool. And losses from food price subsidies are increasing. Eh, things happen. Infant mortality, decreasing. Good, 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 good. Land distribution, uh, land owned by wealthy is 5%, uh, appears to be doing well. Land owned by other private producers, that's increasing. Land held by state, formerly owned by Farsantes, is decreasing. Alright, food crops. Uh, um, <laughs> that's a... <laughs> I think we need some more food, guys. <laughs> Export crops. Okay, so cotton's the biggest one. Cotton price has gone up. Coffee production has remained stable. Cotton production has gone down. And coffee price has gone up. What all that means is that we're continuing to make a we're continuing to make money on everything. Cotton not so much, but coffee, okay. Currency reserves uh, <laughs> Our debt's going up, and our hard currency reserves are going down. Who knew? Right. God help us. Okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and call this video here. Going to call it quits. Next time, we're going to continue the rainy season, season, presuming that this works. I also need to take a Tums, or four, or nine.
Ah, in this process of continuing to make new memories for my brain, we can talk to everyone again now. Yay! Everyone's available. Everyone's a winner. I didn't piss off that cotton dude last time. I actually had like a nice drink or something with him, maybe some caviar. Whatever, fuck him now. It's the future!